we will go ahead and get started with the interviews. You guys know one thing that I love uh, about All Access is the fact that you, me, and everyone else that's kind of listening gets to hear answers and have your questions answered straight from the executive themselves. Uh, I believe we've got Vin in the back. So Vin, you just give me a thumbs up whenever you are ready and we'll get started with you. Um, but, you know, we've got AI has been such a awesome. AI has been such a great hot topic lately, but you've got companies that have been working on this for quite some time. And there's more to AIs than just you guys trying to do your homeworks on ChatGPT. So it should be a fun and interesting conversation. So without any further ado, let me go ahead and bring up my man, Vin Singh, who is the founder and CEO of Bullfrog AI, ticker BFRG. Vin, how's it going? Good, Janet. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for hopping on the show. Uh, AI, like I said, it's been the hot topic, talk of the town, no matter where you go, everyone wants to know about it. But uh, if you could explain it to me like I'm five, what is it that your company does? Sure. Yeah. Uh, AI is definitely very hot and it's only getting hotter. But uh, our company is really uh, all about tech enabled drug development. So using AI and machine learning to de-risk the drug development process. And that could be for clients, you know, other companies, or for our own purposes. Uh, we may want to acquire drugs or rescue drugs, um, but in, at the same time, help other companies with their drug development process so they can be more successful. Because uh, as you probably know, and your audience may or may not know, uh, it's an, a very expensive process to develop drugs. It takes 10 to 15 years and one to $2 billion. And uh, surprisingly, Drugs fail in the final stage of testing 50% of the time, which is unbelievable. And what ends up happening is that trickles down to all of us and we end up paying a lot of money for drugs. Um, so, you know, that's really what we're uh, focused on. Um, our technology comes out of uh, the Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Lab. And I'm guessing uh, a lot of people in your audience don't know what that is. So let me tell you a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, it's also called APL. It's one of the preeminent uh, research institutions in the world. They have more than 6000 engineers and scientists developing amazing technologies for space exploration, robotics, you know, defense related applications. They develop this very powerful AI platform that we are now using for you know, drug development applications. And it actually won an award there you know, for innovation of the year. So it's, uh, you know, really the company was founded on this technology um, uh, and we're really excited about the quality behind us and the potential going forward. I want to, I'm going to touch base on the John Hopkins University uh, relationship in a second, but I want to go back to what you said that kind of piqued my interest talking about, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, you said 50% of drugs fail. Did I understand that correctly? That is How correct. I, in the yeah. final stage of testing, also called phase three. Got it. How is it that your company is hoping to decrease that number, right? Like, is there like, how, how, what is the advantage of working with you guys to help decrease that number? Cause it's unfortunate if you're spending all this money and then the drug fails, obviously the human element of it is different, but from a right. business standpoint, that kind of sucks. Yep. Well, with our technology, we can look at very large complex data sets and find relationships and patterns and insights. And those are the kinds of things that can, help you and basically design your clinical trial, for example. Um, so, you know, we talked about phase three failures, but in order to get to phase three, you have to get through phase two, okay? In order to get through phase two, you have to demonstrate that the drug was efficacious, okay? It worked on some patients. So why does it fall apart at such a high rate between two and three? So that's where you need a tool to help figure that out and look for the you know, clusters of information that will help identify what patients will best respond to a drug, what patients may, this may be more you know, toxic to, uh, whatever it is, whatever the question you're trying to answer. Um, yeah. So it's all about having the right tool to solve the problem. And you know, we feel very confident about what we have. Okay. And now let's come back to the John Hopkins, um, you know, the, the University of Applied Physics Lab partnership that you have. Uh, what are you kind of hoping, I know you touched on a little bit when you started talking about it, but with the technology, the features and everything that you have, what are you hoping ends up being the result of this partnership that you're hoping to achieve? You know, ultimately, you know, if, if you look at what's happening in our, in our, in healthcare, um, 
drugs that you probably take or friends take today or for medications, half the time they don't even work, right? Um, and I think ultimately we want to help address that, right? If we are using our tool to basically better match up patients with, with, with therapies, that will result in drugs that are approved and that drugs are better designed for individuals. So we're not left trying different types of, you know, different drugs for arthritis or, uh, you know, high blood pressure, or cholesterol, whatever it is, and experimenting and trying to figure out what works for us. That will be the ultimate impact of what we're doing. Now, if you, if you ask my mom, she would just give me the old remedies that work instead of medicine, right? Turmeric is what a lot of people know about. No matter what happens, that's what I got growing up. Uh, but <laughs> let's talk about your competitors because I've got someone in the chat here asking, there are a lot of AI companies who do similar analysis on large data sets. Assuming that's correct, I'd love to know why it's Bullfrog that has the advantage to be better than everybody else. Yeah, well, we think we have an advantage because we're not using uh, you know, public you know, open source algorithms. Ours are proprietary. Uh, we had a publication uh, that came out of Johns Hopkins about a year ago where we compared our, our algorithms to the most popular algorithms used out there for clustering. Uh, and as far as speed and accuracy, ours came out on top. And even a small difference can make a big difference in a clinical trial. For example, uh, many trials will fail, not many, but a significant number will fail by one or two patients. And that's, you know, that's the difference between a complete failure and a billion dollar drug that's actually helping people around the world. So I think that's, you know, th those are the reasons we feel uh, pretty confident with what we have. The other thing, what we're able to do is make predictions even with incomplete data. And that's a big deal because, you know, in every sector, Data is the key, right? And yeah. uh, in a lot of sectors, there's a lot of garbage data out there. Uh, in in our, you know, in the healthcare sector, right, real world evidence and clinical data, you may have incomplete data. That's common, right? And we go through a process where we scrub this data, but even if there is incomplete data, we're able to make predictions, and that's a huge advantage. And that's not something that I think many uh, organizations are able to do with their technology. Yeah, I mean, the fact that you're able to kind of compute with predictions and analysis based on incomplete data, that definitely is something uh, that's key. Well, look, I know you recently went public, so congratulations on that. But obviously, you guys have been doing this for quite some time. What are some challenges that you kind of deal with when you're trying to achieve your goals? I know you've got a lot of partnerships. One of them I'm going to bring up here later on again. Uh, mm -hmm. But what are some challenges that you are expecting and how are you well suited to overcome those in the coming months and years? Well, we're really focused on the top and bottom line going forward. Um, you know, we want to ramp revenue. We want to get deals done. Uh, we think we're very well positioned relative to a lot of our competitors because, you know, we're a lean company and, uh, the, you know, the focus is getting to profitability as quickly as possible. We're not going to build a, a company with hundreds of people and end up, you know, burning lots of money for years and years. We're going to be very disciplined in our approach. Um, so, you know, we see nothing but, you know, green pastures in front of us. There's a lot of opportunity for us. Uh, we have, you know, a lot of things going on in the company and we're getting a lot of interest uh, from, you know, the outside world, the, the markets. So, um, you know, it, it just comes down to execution. And uh, that's something that, uh, you know, I put a lot of emphasis on. And we have a, a tremendous, diverse team that knows how to execute. Um, and, uh, so I'm, I'm really, you know, excited about what's to come next. Now doing what you're doing, I'm going to ask one more question and I'll turn it off to you. Uh, doing what you're doing isn't cheap, right? I know recently you had a, uh, file S1 filed, uh, with the SEC. Can you tell me the financial health of the company for the folks at home that may not have read that already publicly available information? Well, you know, it's, I think we're. We're, we're in good shape. Uh, our, our burn is relatively low to companies in our, in our space. Um, we are obviously in a quiet period, so I want to be careful what I say or don't say, but uh, let's just leave it at that. I think we're yeah. very well positioned, and uh, I think uh, you know, we, we feel good about where we are and where we're headed.
Yeah, absolutely. And that's why I wanted to go with whatever already is public. But we've talked a lot of things. We covered a lot of things about what you do, what you're hoping to achieve, John Hopkins and your competitors and your advantage that you have. Was there anything else that you were hoping that I would cover or that I would ask about? The floor is all yours to talk to our viewers at home. No, it's just, uh, I, I think, look, we're a company. Uh, we are, uh, we have a great technology. It comes out of a great institution. Uh, this is proprietary technology. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity out there. There's a lot of failed drugs. There's a lot of companies that, you know, need an advantage, a little advantage even will, will help them be, be successful. And that'll trickle down to all of us, right? Because, you know, we're, we're all going to take medications in our lives. And uh, everything we're doing is, is aimed at impacting that down the road. So I, I think I'd like to leave the audience with that. And uh, thank you very much. Absolutely. Well, look, I mean, hey, Vegas has like an edge of 1.5% and they make a lot of money off of everybody, I'm sure. So that little edge definitely can go a long way. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate you being here. That's Vince Singh, founder and CEO of Bullfrog AI, ticker BFRG. Thank you so much, man. Thank you, Zanig. Appreciate it.